Before I get into anything for this video, I just want to say content warning, trigger warning for suicide. Um, I'm talking about that Logan Paul video that I'm sure most of the people watching this will have already heard about, but just in summary, um, this vlogger, Logan Paul, fastest growing channel on YouTube. He has like a YouTube Red show, maybe two. He was vlogging a trip that he took to Japan that was already pretty problematic in the way that he was treating the locals, just anyone he ran into, as just like someone to mess with or someone to provoke to make like a spectacle out of basically the entire country. So if you look behind me, this is where you throw coins into the well. You make a wish and they come true. What are you gonna wish for? I wish for health. Uh, happiness and hell of There you go. But this whole thing went greater than just within his fan base when he went to a forest in Japan that is known for uh, being a place where hundreds of people commit suicide every year. And he went in there knowing that about it, going into a restricted area, found a body, acted surprised that he found a body, even though it was definitely intentional, filmed it, blurred out the face, but like, that doesn't, that doesn't really absolve him of any guilt, and uploaded it to YouTube with a clickbaity title and a body in the thumbnail. Most of what can be said about this, I feel like has already been said, um, Philip DeFranco um, covered it really well, the Jenna Julian podcast was really why I'm uploading this because I just was listening to them and thinking oh I, I might have a little bit to add. Basically he went to a country that has respect as one of its really central tenets of the culture and he went there to make clickbaity videos about him doing ridiculous things in the country to get views, to ultimately get money and to get more power on the platform. He filmed the body of a suicide victim for his own gain, and when I say gain, I mean tangible monetary gain, gain in subscribers, gain in AdSense money, and gain in notoriety, and apparently his fan base is pretty cool with it. Like, his core group hasn't really gone away even though he's gotten a lot of negative negative attention from the outside. This might not really end his career. I know he said at the end that he was doing it to raise awareness to a really important issue, and while suicide is a really important issue, if that's an issue that you care about, do better. You're not helping anyone by subjecting people to to a body and and laughing about it and making jokes about it and making it a part of your vlog media circus and then just just tacking on a little a little brief thing at the end that's like fake genuine um, if if you really want to like help with mental health issues it needs to be an honest conversation you can't be posting shocking things and graphic content for views and for clicks. That's just not the way, that's not helping anybody. Really all he's doing is adding to the stigma of mental illness while benefiting from it monetarily. By, make, by benefiting from being like, whoa, look at this body behind me. Isn't that shocking? By the way, uh, Logang for Life, buy my merch. Like, no. <laughs> What I really wanted to do was to put this into the context of the way YouTube enforces their really, really vague community guidelines really harshly for smaller creators and for creators like Logan Paul, who are like the, the babies of YouTube, even though they really haven't been around for very long, they're Vine stars. They have YouTube red shows and they're making the platform a ton of money, and so they're not being held to the same standard as a lot of smaller creators. A lot of the people who picked up a camera and just said how they were feeling about this without showing any graphic content, just them reacting to something that 
is really relevant to the platform, a lot of those videos were demonetized, a lot of those videos were taken down, while the actual video itself, again showing a dead body, um, was up, it was not removed by YouTube, it was taken down by Logan Paul himself, and it was on the trending page for a day or so, and it was it was up, and YouTube officials had to have seen it, um, so it was a conscious choice, I think, to not remove it. It wasn't an accident, it wasn't an, oops, how did this get to the top position on our website? I think that they're just protecting him by not saying anything. And when you don't leave room on your platform for discussion and for, and for people to react to things and start a conversation within YouTube, when you're not letting that happen, you're just stopping growth and you're actually just stopping that conversation before anything productive can happen from it. Even greater than just the scope of one video that went up, a lot of YouTube creators who put out news, who put out videos about LGBTQ topics, they are getting hit really hard right now in terms of advertisers. They're just talking about the issues that matter to them, what's affecting their life, it's people picking up a camera and sharing information that's vital to their communities and their content is being taken down and even when it's not a violation, like Cat Black just was talking about a video of hers from 2014 that was taken down that um, covered the way black women's bodies are hypersexualized and she's talking about the whole history of that and exhibition shows that were like 100 years ago and that video just got taken down and there's a strike against her account now like there's a very real consequence for her for posting something that YouTube decided wasn't okay but for Logan Paul apparently he can just just a few more examples Chase Ross makes videos about prosthetics that are for trans men that are not sexual and those, every time those get put up, they get demonetized and that's an example of someone making content that is very useful for a specific community that there isn't really like a place for anywhere else and YouTube is making it not, not a viable way to use their platform but it's viable to post like really over-the-top pranks and very shocking imagery and it just seems like that rule is being enforced differently for people who are who are underrepresented who are representing themselves on this platform and people who are who are taking advantage of of different struggles and kind of making it into into a into a spectacle and packaging them up and putting it on YouTube and making money off of it. I know the way that YouTube polices itself is seen as random, but I think that the message here is that if you're speaking out against the status quo and if you're saying things that don't line up with leaving power structures the way they are, then your content isn't viable on this platform. Logan Paul's Japan videos are feeding into that narrative of like this other and like oh look at look at how they do things here I'm just gonna throw coins in this well and whatever and say a bunch of really really inappropriate things in a temple in a place of worship because it's not real to me that's the vibe that I got from those videos and that's riding off of this whole wave of othering of Asian cultures that has existed in the states since there were the United States. And that sounds like a huge reach, and I know it sounds like a huge reach. This was supposed to be a democratized platform, it's literally YouTube, like you can just pick up a camera and record something, but now it depends on whether or not what you're saying is viable to advertisers and it seems like what is viable is the way things are and when someone is picking up a camera to question something 
that happened in the news, like Phil DeFranco's channel is getting hit really hard right now, or if you're talking about a very specific kind of feminism, like if you're Cat Black and you're literally telling your own stories on, on this platform and that's not like cool with with the way things are right now with certain people in power and others not if you're questioning that it seems like it's less likely to be supported by advertisers and then less likely to that you'll even have a voice on this platform it has always been profitable to point at someone who isn't like you if you're white and say look at that and I'm gonna make a big show about it even before TV before TV it would be like I know I'm just talking about this because that's what the video that Cat Black put out that was put down that was what that was about it's a look at this strange other and look at what is that and what are they doing why do they look like that why did they why is their culture like that and it seems like that has always been profitable and it's always been profitable to reap the benefits of another culture and package it neatly and put it out into whatever entertainment platform exists in that century. It has always existed. So what I'm trying to say is that this is an example of someone going to a place with a lot of negative history with the intention of making a profit for themselves and then acting like they're doing a service when really they're just, they're not telling anyone else's story, they're not helping people with mental illness and they're definitely, he's not, definitely not helping the image of Americans traveling anywhere. I know he's, a, he's just one guy but I hope, I hope people don't think that that's how Americans go to foreign countries. I hope that people don't think that we just go into temples and laugh and we don't go and film bodies and think, haha, look at that guy. Like, no, <laughs> we can't let that be like the image of our country. For anything to change here, we have to make it so that it's not as profitable for someone to make really graphic content or for someone to make pranks of just like hurting people. It has to be more profitable to be having honest conversation or honestly showing your life or talking about issues that you care about, that has to be more worthy of the platform's advertisers than the Logan Pauls and the Jake Pauls of the internet. And I don't have an easy solution for that, I have no idea. But we have to change this ecosystem that favors just whatever gets the clicks and whatever people whatever is the most shocking and whatever is the most graphic and often that's also whatever is feeding into whatever fears or misunderstandings we already have we need to just unlearn those and have open and honest conversations about about mental illness and this was not an example of how to talk about mental illness I know I don't need to repeat that but I don't have an easy solution for it right now, but I think just talking about it, um, no matter what, what space you're in, if you're feeling affected by the video, if you, sh if you saw it and didn't know if someone showed it to you and you weren't expecting to see a body, I can understand that's like really shocking, especially if you have mental health problems. So please don't be afraid to reach out to the people near you, I'll put some resources in the caption. I just wanted to say um, my piece about this in um, partially in response to the Jenna Julian podcast and partially in response to what's happening to Cat Black and all the other creators that I've noticed are getting slammed by YouTube. It's more like those two th two issues in my mind I are really related. I just wanted to connect YouTubers problem with favoring some content over others and that content being a lot of the times more likely to be oppressive or supporting the status quo while really slamming smaller creators, LGBTQ creators, people doing the news. I just wanted to make that connection um, and thanks for watching.